Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Day Spring Discussions. I'm your host, Sean McGahey, and this is the show where we talk about movies, sci-fi, comic books, TV, fantasy. If you geek out about it, we're going to talk about it. We are running a little late this week, just schedules didn't quite match up, but we are here to bring you some awesome content today. Here to help me bring that awesome content, Mr. Joshua Del Angel, after a long hiatus, man. It's been a while since you've been here. I was going to say, I think the delay is a uh, majority of my fault, usually. Um, sorry about that. To all my hardcore fans, I just want to apologize up front for my long abstinence. Hardcore fans, <laughs> right? <laughs> Who, like, you're your all those, mom or what? Uh, yeah. Uh, family, friends, cousins. Right. Okay. Well, that works. Well, somebody's listening. I know I know, I know. I have a few people that listen. Hopefully some of our coworkers listen. They occasionally do, but... Better if they consider ourselves our friends. I know, right? It's, it's kind of mean if they don't, really. But we got a lot to go over today, so we just need to jump right into it. Before we do, I'm going to comment on a few things. Uh, coming up next week, we have the San Diego Comic Con. Oh, man. Uh, a lot of stuff coming out with that. Uh, the number one thing I think I'm looking forward to is news on the DC movies. So, of course, we have uh, Wonder Woman coming out next month, and I think we're going to get a teaser or a trailer or something from Wonder Woman at Comic-Con. Yeah. Honestly. Oh, yeah. And then there's said to be some Justice League stuff there as well. So, we got that going on as well as a few other things. So, I'm kind of excited for that because Marvel really doesn't have... A lot going on. I mean, they're shooting Infinity War or whatever they're calling it right now, but I don't think we're going to see much of that. But they do have Doctor Strange coming out, which I'm sure they'll, you know, dive into that a little bit. But really, I think people are looking forward to the DC stuff with, um, you know, with Wonder Woman and Justice League and all that. It's uh, time to shine, man. Yeah, they, exactly. They got a lot coming exactly. up. Exactly. So, so that's coming up. And now, San Diego's kind of the big thing, right? It is the big one, yes. It is the big one, so it'll be interesting to see what uh, goes on around there. Now, this weekend, however, is Star Wars Celebration. Star Wars Celebration is pretty much Comic-Con, where it's all Star Wars. Uh, last year, I believe, it was in Anaheim. This year, it's in London. And then next year, it's in Orlando. And guess who's going to Orlando? Son this of a guy. Gun. Oh, yeah. I'm super excited for next year. Um, yeah, Star Wars Celebration looks like really awesome, and I'm not expecting a lot of Star Wars stuff from Comic Con next week because Star Wars Celebration is the week before this week. Okay, so they're gonna wait till the big unveiling. I, I imagine so. I imagine all okay. the big Star Wars stuff you're gonna get this weekend. So we'll probably talk all about all about all that next week. Uh, but some of the stuff we're expecting to hear from. Uh, they already said there's gonna be a new Rogue One trailer coming out, so we'll get to see that. Um, people are expecting some episode 8 news with a possible title and maybe even a clip or two or even a tease what? of episode 8. I'm not counting on too much clips from episode 8, but I am counting on a title, honestly. A I teaser? Think, I think we could definitely get a title of what episode 8 will be called, I believe. Cool. Um, and then also, uh, one of the things I'm looking forward to is Star Wars Rebels. Season 2 ended phenomenally. They just posted a clip last night kind of a tease for season three and they're going to see more uh, i think be i believe they're actually airing the first couple episodes of season three at star wars celebration so that'll be awesome so a lot of stuff coming out from there star wars news wise we'll probably be talking about that next week i'm looking forward to that because again i'm a big star wars fan and also i'm super excited to go out to Star Wars Celebration next year. Yeah, That'll yeah, be awesome. yeah, yeah. I'm gonna yeah. keep talking about that. Definitely. Uh, well, tell me this: Do you think we're gonna see a Darth Vader appearance in this next Rogue One trailer? I think so. People have been speculating. I think now that they've announced that Darth Vader is officially in the movie, I think you're gonna see him. And I think we're gonna have to see a Darth Vader who kicks ass. Uh, what, what do you mean, young, agile? No, robotic, agile. But okay, when we see less robotic, when we see Darth, Darth Vader. Vader at the beginning of episode four. He's in his prime, okay? He's his most evil, and he is a force to be reckoned with. Him and Palpatine spent almost 20 years hunting down the Jedi and killing them, so you had to think that he's, you know, of course, he's pretty badass, even if he's part robot. 20 years? Yeah, 20 years. 20, episode three to episode four is 20 years, yeah. okay? Because, you know, Luke was a baby in episode three, and he was, you know, an adult in episode Four. But anyway, yes, oh Vader will be in it. I think in this movie is really going to show Vader kicking some ass as well. At least that's what I hope. Just so you can see. Because on screen, we really haven't seen, 
yeah, he's he's evil and you see him choke people and all that, but I want to see him fight in like a battle situation, you know? I don't want to see a CGI Darth Vader. Though. Not a CGI I, Darth Vader. I definitely want to see him. But I want to see him use his saber and his force skills to, you know, take down some rebels in like, you know, an Omaha Beach kind of, you know, battle. Oh wow, yeah. Now, but he's now like you a, gotta go he's on. a general yeah. leading the stormtroopers and he's like, go oh, and then he like force pushes and like takes out a bunch of you know, rebels coming his way and yeah, for all, slices uh, through some of them and stuff too. For all you battlefront fans, that's uh that's there's a couple images in that game that would probably be uh, great to see in the movies. I'm sure they took a cue from that too and probably gonna put something like that in But anyway, Star Wars news coming out, that's gonna be awesome. Other thing I wanna talk about next week, uh, on Tuesday, less than a week. Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice Ultimate Cut comes out. Now, for those of you who bought the digital copy that came out several weeks ago, you're already ahead of some of us. Me, since, you know, I didn't like Batman v Superman the theatrical cut that much, I was debating whether or not I wanted to buy it. So I found on YouTube this guy who had taken the Ultimate Cut and put like little three to four minute, four minute snippets and made a playlist out of them where it's almost like you're watching the movie. And I've been going through and kind of watching it, and I gotta say, the fact that they took 30 minutes out of the original cut for the theatrical cut, that 30 minutes is so worth it. Really? In, in my opinion. Of course, I'm watching just little snippets. I want to see it going, you know, in a fluid motion to connect the dots, because originally what this is supposed to be is what Zack Snyder wanted to show. Right. But then the studio's like, no, we gotta cut the time down to two and a half hours so we can, you know, show more viewings and we can get more ticket sales make a profit more of a profit right. is what it is and i can't wait to see this cut because i do i am curious to see what they've cut out and to see I, i'm literally like to find out uh, after seeing the, this edition why why cut those scenes instead mm. of the and, and leave the scenes that you left in the theatrical yeah, and versions. you liked about maybe superman more than i did i did not like I did. the theatrical cut at all i did so with this one this is some of the stuff that i've seen on youtube is my problem with Batman v Superman is I felt like it was a bunch of scenes that I put together that didn't really make sense, both connecting the dots and story-wise and character motivation. Watching these YouTube clips, I see the motivation, I see the dots connecting. All right. So that's what it is. I mean, you got to think though, okay? This movie's meant to be thir three hours, okay? 30 minutes was taken out. That's one sixth of the film is gone. Right. Of what it was supposed to be. Yeah. So in movie that, time, that's a big chunk. Exactly. So. Watching these snippets, I can see I'm enjoying the film actually. Watching these YouTube clips has made me want to get to pick up the Blu ray on Tuesday. Yeah, before I was very questionable, I didn't really want to, but watching this now, I'm like, Yes, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get it on Tuesday, I'm gonna watch it on Tuesday because I believe this is gonna be a much better film. And I tell you what, I might be singing a different tune if I like this edition as far as my hopes for Justice League and also my affection towards Man of Steel. Because I, I like Man of Steel less than I like that of me, Superman, just to give you a reference point. But kind of like with X-Men Days of Future Past. I didn't like First Class, but I really liked Days of Future Past. And my affection for Days of Future Past made me like First Class a little bit more because it was set up. Gotcha. So that's kind of how I'm, I kind of, at this point, if I, if I like the Ultimate Cut as much as I think I'm going to, I'm going to like Man of Steel a little more because of the setup. Yeah, I agree. I think it's going to give us a little bit more hope for the Justice League. I think lineup. so, too. Um, yeah. I'm excited, man. Honestly, uh, what, anniversaries on Monday. I'm trying to convince the girlfriend to buy this copy for me as a gift. So, maybe. my birthday was Tuesday. And, of course, the birthday cards and such have been rolling in. Mm -hmm. So, yesterday I got a nice little uh, gift card, Visa gift card. Oh, man. So, I imagine that I'm just going to use that to pick it up. And, of course... It's, I'm going to get the combo. I always get the combos. I get the Blu-ray, the DVD, and digital copy Blue combo copy. back. So I'll let you borrow the DVD, of course. It, you I know, have it already. If you're not allowed, I'm probably gonna if go you're buy not it allowed to buy it, I'll probably if, end up uh, buying if it. It's, you know, people you criticize me for my, uh, <laughs> for, 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 for my allowance. Amber's allegedly. tightening up the grip, man. I'm yeah. scared, dude. She's tightening up the grip. Well, so. come on now. We all need a little tightening up. All I right. mean, let's just be fair about that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm excited, man. Uh, come Tuesday, um, I say buy it, man. I say uh, don't I'm gonna, don't I'm, hesitate. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna after watching these YouTube clips, I'm gonna get it, and uh, I think I'm gonna like it. I can't say I'm gonna love it, but just from what I've seen, the dots are good. Okay, it's um, it's like okay, the the Superman desert scene. All right, P 
people were like mad at Superman for that scene, right? You right. know, they're, the whole, well, but I'm like, okay, well, what what did he do? You know, in the theatrical cut, he just saved Lois, and everyone else got shot. Why are they blaming Superman for these people being shot? In the uh, ultimate cut, what happens is those guys that are working for we find out Lex Luthor, and if you haven't seen the movie by now, just sorry, we're gonna spoil some stuff for you. But we find out they're bur they burn their bodies to make it look like. Oh, he, he, he laser beams laser, them. Yes, he exactly. Burns he, them. He use the heat vision as well. So there are several things they do. Again, that and that sets up motivation for that. You see Clark going into Gotham and interviewing people and doing more investigating about Batman and kind of fueling his, um, what I want to say, his disapproval right. of what Batman does. And then you also see Lois a little more doing her investigating, connecting the dots from the desert to what happens at the Capitol building. And connecting it all to Lex Luthor as well. Sweet. Again, connecting the dots. The dots that I felt like those little links that were missing in the theatrical cut were getting those, or I'm seeing those in the in the ultimate cut. And yeah. it's, it's going to help the film. I feel. Yeah, it's. I, I think I'm going to be amazed at what the what this 30 minutes of footage does for an entire story. I mean, mm -hmm. when you're trying to tell a story and you miss key points, mm -hmm. the story is incomplete. Exactly. So, I mean, I'm. I'm gonna, I can't wait, man. I'm. I'm stoked. Cool, cool. All right, guys, so let's jump into our first official topic of today, and it's something that's taken over the world called Pokemon Go. Now, I am not a big Pokemon guy, so I made sure to check with Josh last night to make sure he has been playing Pokemon Go, because I have not at all. I've just been hearing the craze about it. So just give you a little heads up, guys. The Pokemon company, Nintendo, released a mobile game called Pokemon Go. Uh, encourages fans to search far and wide in the real world to discover Pokemon. Pokemon Go uh, is actually available on Google Play and at the iTunes Store. Uh, previous Pokemon games used real world places such as New York, Paris, and Japan uh, for inspirations for their settings. Now in Pokemon Go, players are able to catch, trade, and battle in the real world by utilizing local information. Pokemon Go experience goes beyond what it appears on the screen as players explore their neighborhoods, their communities, and the world they live in uh, with uh, their mobile devices. CEO of Pokemon Company said, quote, Our challenge was to develop a great game for smartphone devices that express the core values of Pokemon. Uh, manufactured by Nintendo, it, this game connects uh, to smartphones via Bluetooth and it flashes and vibrates to notify players about events like the appearance of a Pokemon near them. This thing blew up. Okay, like <laughs> to it, say it the totally least. blew up. There's like two kinds of people. There are people now that are playing this game, and then there's people that aren't. Uh, we were at the Six Flags water park the other day, eating lunch. This girl was sitting across from us. She was 15, 16 years old. We were chatting. She was saying how cute Nora was. And then all of a sudden she got this like little beep or whatever. And she's uh -huh. like, you guys play Pokemon Go? I'm like, no. She's like, oh my God, it's so addictive. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. what? So then, so then I was asking her questions about it, how it worked and stuff like that. You've played it, right? Yes. Okay. So tell me your experience about it, how you feel about it. Um, you know, what? what's your take on all this? Well, first off. We all grew up with Pokemon. What I, are you see, that's the thing. I didn't. Okay, it you, was you, it was right after me. You, okay, that's it true. Was, okay, right. okay. So my generation, this was the bomb. All right, this was. Uh -huh. We all played it on Game Boy. That's where it kind of started. Of course, everybody knows and loves the show, uh, which is now on Netflix, by the way. Um, yes, um, and they're, they're, it's trending actually. Yes. I saw on Netflix yesterday Ooh. that the, the Pokemon stuff is trending because people are probably playing the game and then going to watch the oh, yeah. show. Yeah. Right now, my dilemma is do I put on Gladiator or do I put on Pokemon Indigo? Really? Do I watch really? the whole series? You know, really? that's the battle. You're going to so. choose between <laughs> an Oscar dominated film and Pokemon? Hey, that's how good it is. Uh, but, anyways, okay. grew up on this on Game Boy, and what they've done with this game is genius. They've a able to. <laughs> apply basically the fundamentals that we all love and remember from the Game Boy game and implement into this mobile phone app. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really genius, man. I mean, the another fact, reason for people to look at their phones. Exactly, and that's 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 my biggest dilemma. <laughs> I know I'm going to be addicted to this thing. I. <laughs> tiptoeing into the game because I know my habits and I know I will be addicted to this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, what I find is cool and something I've never seen before is that they're using Google Maps, man. Yeah, they're implementing yeah. Google, Google Maps. is all about this. It's the engine behind mm -hmm. the game. Yeah, and, and I heard there's problems where people have pulled out that they're actually getting more information 
about people through it through through Google's connection to it, which I heard they're fixing as well. But uh, I'm sure they have some uh, you know things to to uh, straighten out with that. But um, it, it's really everything you want from the game, but everything you love about the Game Boy version. Uh, updated and put into this uh, and attached to Google Maps, man, which makes it very cool. Um, <laughs> I had a friend post a picture the other day of a live, I think it was a crane or a, uh, an actual buzzard, <laughs> real life buzzard, and he takes snaps a picture of it and it's like, this graphics are really real. <laughs> uh, that just makes me think, man, uh, I, it's hilarious. It's really, I mean, it's great that it's getting people out. Yeah, they're getting them out like there are people who go out and like, actually walk around their neighborhood trying to find Pokemon and stuff now. Right. So, like, exercise, there's that meme going around of the dog on the ground where he's like, I don't know what a Pokemon is, but we've been out walking six times today, you know? <laughs> so that's good. But there's also that other side of it as well where people have, you know, there's one city where someone stopped right in the middle of the highway to try to catch a Pokemon, caused a major accident. Uh, some people are using this to lure people to, you know, places and, you know, rob them as oh, well. Wow. Uh, there was that one lady who was going on the Pokemon, looking at her phone, and she stumbled upon a dead body. I mean, it's it's really interesting how this is affecting the culture, you know, so to speak. Because there's positives and there's negatives about it, really. And honestly, what I'm seeing is a lot of people kind of continue, if they don't have an app, they don't have their phone, if they're not, if they're going to be on their phone regardless, but a lot of people go throughout their day kind of unaware of their surroundings uh -huh. and this game is forcing them to go out and about into their Going environment different places, which yeah. of course i feel like you're going to automatically discover some things that you don't normally see okay Tight. on a day-to-day -day basis let me let me do let me ask this question because i still haven't figured this out what is a gym and what exactly does it encompass and how did, i heard something about you can steal gyms from other people uh, so the gym, from my understanding, is designated locations on your map where you go and battle. Battle people, okay. In order to get into these gyms, you have to be at a level 5. Uh -huh. And one, and you get to level 5 by training your trainer, uh -huh. um, train, uh, or leveling up your character by catching Pokemon and, and, and gaining experience with these Pokemon. Uh -huh. Now once you get to the gym... Uh, and you battle, you can then create Pokemon gym teams. Okay. And kind of, kind of your crew that is at that gym. So you have designated gyms that you can okay. sort of claim. Okay. Um, and uh, that's very much from the original Pokemon as well. Okay, uh, so you can, okay, you get these teams together at a gym, but like people own the gym, don't they? Yes. Okay, so people own the gym by gaining, like, having like experience points or whatever, right? Yes. And then if you beat that person in their gym, you take over their gym, is that correct? I believe so. I'm not 100% okay. sure on that part. Okay. But I believe, yes. Uh, usually the way it's worked in the past is the top dog is going to claim the gym. Uh, the strongest tr strongest trainer will claim the so gym. So is a gym... Is a gym a designated area or is it a designated person? Uh, it's a designated area. Okay. Uh, typically, I, I, we were actually literally, I was at a ginsa, I was sorry, a wedding the other day, and we were <laughs> at a hall, and all my younger cousins and nephews were excited because they were actually at a Pokemon gym. Yeah. And so I think what has been innovated is that these Google Maps is making certain locations gyms. Yeah. And sometimes I think there really are. And you can only battle in a gym. Like, if I meet someone who's doing Pokemon, I can't battle them right there. It has to be a gym area, right? Well, I haven't gotten to that level. I think once I get to level five, you can mm. battle people okay, out Okay, just about. wherever? Wherever. Out on the streets, just if rumbling you, it up, man? If you, think <laughs> of the bystanders, man. Come on. Instead of fists, we're going to be throwing Pokeballs. Um, digital. <laughs> oh, God. God. Um, but yeah, there's, and there's also a thing with the businesses, too, where people go to congregate at these gyms, and some businesses are, like, putting up signs, like, don't, you know, if you come in here for Pokemon, you have to buy something. Or some businesses are like, no, come in, please, congregate, you know? It, give, me a, the, give me the business. It's a matter of time before work puts up a sign. Oh, I already saw the work. No, I've, I've seen a sign. Pokemon I've Go. Seen, I've seen a sign. There was a sign somebody put up where it's like, you're here to work, not to play Pokemon. Do it on your bathroom or lunch break or yeah, whatever. It, uh, I've seen lots of Snapchats of people at work that's playing just, Pokemon That's just Go, how it is. So. This is another digital thing that's going to take over our lives. Oh, I can't. I want to see how it's doing in China or Japan. Well, it hasn't. I don't think it's open actually yet oh, in China. God. If I remember correctly, it hasn't opened there yet. So I'm curious to see how that opens. I mean, I'm sure it'll be even way bigger there. Right. They, even. I mean, so. But it's, as like I said, it's gotten positive as negative. I have no interest at all in playing it. I'm not a big mobile gamer anyway. I'm not right. a gamer in general, but 
again, I have no interest in Pokemon because that's not my, what I grew up on. I'm not a big mobile. So this really just has no interest for me. I'm just fascinated by the phenomenon. I'm wondering how long it's going to last because now, of course, as of like yesterday, the day before, they're talking Pokemon movie again. Oh, Because yeah. Pokemon's blown up. They're talking because they've been, if several studios have been fighting between the live action rights for the Pokemon movie, and now that this game is blown up again, it they're talks are again. the talks are getting in again. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just curious how long this is gonna last and what's gonna come of it. Imagine a live action. Well, of course you don't, you don't care, but a live okay hardcore fans live action Pokemon okay, movie. Okay, but let's let's Let think about that. this for a sec. You're you're a Dragon Ball fan, right? Yes. Think about oh, the Dragon Ball live action movie. Up. I you had to bring that up, didn't you? Think about Be careful what you wish for is all I'm saying, man. <laughs> yeah. It's all I'm saying. All right. Okay? Uh, Fair enough. But here, let me put you on the spot. Okay. You do decide to play this game. <coughs> you got to pick an element. Fire, water, earth. Who are you, Sean? Oh, come You even have to ask me that, dude. You even have to ask me what element I would choose. Anyone who knows me knows what element I will choose. What would I choose? Water. Of course. I just want to hear you say it, Aquaman. That's all I want to say. It. Just want to hear. You Which say one it. would you choose? I'd have to go with uh, Fire Man. I'm saying Fire for you, yeah. Yeah, I'd definitely yeah. Say fire. I'd probably fit Fire for you, yeah. But there you go, man. Pokemon. We'll see what comes of it. Be careful playing, guys. Be careful. Keep your heads up. You know, whatever you have to do. But all right, moving on to the next topic that I got a lot of buzz from last week. So one thing I skipped over at Comic Con is they're actually premiering the movie Star Trek Beyond. There, it's going to be like the day or two days before the movie actually premieres. The cast is going to be there. They're going to do a live uh, event with an actual orchestra at Comic Con. Kind of a big thing because it is the 50th anniversary of Star Trek as well. So people are excited for that. They're going to have a Star Trek panel. They're going to show this movie with an orchestra. So it's going to be a really cool, big deal with that. One of my favorite film com commentators, John Campia, went and saw the movie last night and he I said he gave it a thumbs up which to me is kind of reassuring because I'm kind of iffy on this movie. I love Star Trek. I love I like Star Trek Into Darkness. I like the Kelvin timeline they're going with now. And I've been living through the comics too. The, the comics, current comic series, which is based off of the current film series, I've been liking those as well. Oh, so cool. I was really you know, wanting to make sure this movie's good because it's not J.J. Abrams doing it. It's Justin Lin who did Fast and Furious, which I'm like, eh, you know, he can make a good... I like car film, movie, man. but I think he makes a good action. A f he makes a good, a fun action film. You know, yeah. it, I think that a lot of people. And, can but it's got with Star Trek. You got to have some, some, uh, you know, content. I guess. Oh yeah. There. Well, that's that. I agree. That's probably where I'm the most worried. Is is he going to be able to add a little depth to this yeah, movie? Exactly. Is he going to be able to bring, um, I guess, a, a, a moral to the story? You know, some yeah, type of some, lesson yeah, to be learned. Good. So from what I've heard, like I said, my my favorite co film commentator said he liked it so that gave me a little more hope so jumping into star trek um uh, we learned last week that as kind of a nod to one of the uh series veterans george takai that john cho's sulu character is going to be revealed as gay in the next star trek beyond film coming out and it's going to be the first openly gay character in the franchise's 50 year history Cho had to say, quote, I like the approach, which was not to make a big thing out of it, which is where I hope we are going as a species to not politicize one's personal orientation. Now, Cho talked to the Australian's Herald Sun about that. Takai himself, who played the original Sulu, came back as well. Uh, he actually talked to somebody. I'll tell you here in a minute. But anyway, said, quote, I'm delighted there's a gay character, he like told The Hollywood Reporter, there it is. Unfortunately, it's a twisting of Gene's creation to which he put so much thought. I think it's really unfortunate. This movie is going to be coming out on the 50th anniversary of Star Trek, the 50th anniversary of paying tribute to Gene Roddenberry, the man who made this all happen. Another person who commented, Simon Pegg, who helped write the film and plays Scotty, he said, quote, uh, he's right. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that the screen version of this of a new gay character, uh, excuse me, it's unfortunate the screen version of the most exclusive tolerant universe in science fiction wasn't featured hasn't featured an LGBT character until now. We could have introduced a new gay character, but he or she would have been primarily defined by their sexuality, seen as the gay character rather than the Enterprise crew, straight or not. And then, of course, the last person to chime in on this 
was Zachary Quinto, who plays Spock in the current franchise. He said, quote, As a member of the LGBT community myself, I was disappointed by the fact that George was disappointed. I get it that he has had his own personal journey and had his own personal relationship with this character, but as we established in the first Star Trek film in 2009, we've created an alternate universe. My hope is that eventually George can be strengthened by the uh, enormous positive response from especially young people who are heartened by and inspired by this really tasteful and beautiful portrayal of something that I think is gaining acceptance and inclusion in our societies across the world and should be. Dude, he even talks like Spock now, I feel so like. Suddenly, I love life like that. Okay, so, to me, this is something that's good, that is a bigger issue in the sci-fi comic book world right now. Um, so, I'm going to let you start off, and then I'm going to go on my rant. So, all right, you all right, go for right. it. Well, first off, I love both arguments. I love the fact that this has become, one, not, I wouldn't say a debate, but you, you get to hear both sides. And I understand both sides. Uh, from George's perspective... I get it. It, it kind of takes away from the articles itself, the the um, the uh, subject itself, which is the story, so, you know, Star Trek, the stories that we get from this. Um, you know, and I get it. It's kind of making, uh, but also at the same time, I love what Cho said about um, keeping everybody's private. You know. Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess orientation. The, the good thing to about this, like he said, if you were him and Peg said, if you were to introduce a gay character right off the bat. They would be seen as the gay character. Right. The fact that this is a character that's been not around around for several years in this movie series, but also around for fifty years in you know for Star Trek's history, and then they just say, "Hey, he's gay." By the way, it kind of it doesn't make you. You've already established a relationship with this character that has nothing to do with his sexual orientation. Yeah. And so now you're like, okay, well, it doesn't make a big deal out of it, I guess, as opposed to say, just making a new gay character. Go on. And on that note, it, 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 and I agree, it really shouldn't be a big deal. I, with today's society, the fact that you know it's even mentioned, in my opinion, I think is kind of you know getting getting it publicized is unnecessary. You know, yeah. I think I think it was um, if you threw that into the movie, you didn't nobody knew beforehand. I think it would be fine. I don't think it would cause an uproar. And I and I honestly feel like maybe that's what George is a little upset about. It it is being publicized. It is becoming a separate story on, on its own. Yeah. Um, which I, and which in in perspective is taking some away from the fiftieth anniversary of yeah, Star Trek. Yeah, it, it's you know I mean they of course they said they 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 did this in tribute to George Takai who was a very big uh, outspoken advocate for LGBT rights. Uh, he came out back in two thousand five, and like I said, he's been very expressive about his sexuality. And they said they wanted to pay tribute to it, but you know he said he doesn't like it just because of the fact that it's not how the character was originally designed. Uh, yeah, and I love the class of of both comments from both actors, um, George and Cho's. And I mean, I understand both sides. Uh, George's side being, you know, let's not make, you know, it's unnecessary. Let's not make it about me. Basically, is what I got from that comment. Okay. Okay. So. For me, it's about a bigger issue going on in superhero entertainment, is what he would call it. So, um, a little while ago, back when Captain America: Civil War came out, they were talking about how people were petitioning to make Captain America a gay character, because you know they're like, "Oh, him and Bucky got that gay vibe going on," and I'm like, "Whatever." And then Chris Evans came out to say, "Well, I never played the character that way. That's not how I see him." And of course, he's had a relationship with females in the film. And it's just this outspoken cry. Look, I'm all about diversity and, you know, being politically correct, having, you know, minorities in comics and having, you know, gay characters in comics and all that. I'm completely fine with that. But to me, there's a trend going on right now where they're taking mainstream characters and changing them just to kind of satisfy, I think, not satisfy this audience. Satisfy, basically. The, uh, the audience. They're not, they're, they're not, I feel like they're not doing it to, you know, appease them. They're doing it, honestly, for the publicity yeah. and hoping it'll sell more books or movies or whatever. Yeah. So, like, say, for instance, uh, a year or two ago, they actually turned Iceman from X-Men gay. Yeah. You know? Um, they did uh, one with all new X-Men where um, Bobby, who was his younger self, came out as gay. And then later on, his future self, they had a talk with him about he was realizing he was gay. Right. 
So, and Iceman's been one of my favorite X-Men for a while, and I'm fine with them, you know, changing the character, kind of appeasing him, but even though he has, you know, for what? He's been around since the 60s, so 50 years now or so, he's been straight. He's Most recently, he dated Kitty Pride as well, and for that, you know, changing the character a little bit, I guess I'm not too upset about, but then we're getting into other things as well. For instance, um, Thor is now a lady, Captain America is black, and then last week they announced that they have an African-American female Iron Man. And then, of course, they changed um, the Hulk to uh, Asian-American as well. Right. So they're changing, uh, they're taking these front characters and they're changing them. Now, some of them I don't mind. Uh, say, for instance, Thor. We find out, I mean, it's not actually Thor. It's someone else with the hammer of Thor who has the power of Thor. And then Captain America, it's actually Sam Wilson, a.k.a. Falcon. Which, that is just ridiculous. I know they're trying to make a black Captain America, but, you know, whatever. And then Iron Man, the jury's still out on that. Hulk, whatever. I think the best thing they've done is with Spider-Man. In Ultimate Spider-Man, they created the character Miles Morales, okay? And he's half black and half Latino, and he's Spider-Man. And they took him, they ended kind of the, the Ultimate Universe, I think, last year or so with Secret Wars, and now he's in the mainstream Marvel Universe. So you have Peter Parker Spider-Man and a younger Miles Morales Spider-Man. And to me, that's what they should be doing. They should be, if you want those characters, make new characters. You know, don't take, you know, um, the Hulk and just change him. Like one thing, it was very, very hilarious, I like to joke about this, is in The Flash, okay, The Flash comic book. The TV series, you have Iris West, who is African-American, played by Candace Patton, who is really hot. Anyway, but in the comic book, she's always been white. So over the course of a storyline, what they did was they, like, took her skin color and they gradually made it darker and darker until she was black in the comic books. Like, over the course of one storyline, each issue, they made her just a little darker, a little darker. And I was like, what the hell was that? Jesus, you know? And then Kid Flash, of course, is is African American as well. So I'm not I'm fine with these characters. To me, the issue is taking these characters that have already established, and we already have it. For me, you know, being a comic book reader my whole life, having a, a relationship with them, and then you know changing it up. If you want these gay characters, these African American characters, these you know minority characters, make the new characters. I guess is what I'm saying. But then again. I'm a white male in America. I probably have a little skewed opinion on when it comes to diversity and minorities and all that. Josh, you are a young, girl Latino man. How do you feel about it? Uh, well, I look at comic books uh, as material that's there to give me hope, to inspire me. Okay. And from what I'm thinking about, what comes to mind, I was thinking about Captain America was created... You know, I think around a time when we were in war. We were, he was propaganda. He was created as propaganda for World War II. And that get, makes me think that comic books were created in the first place, not as propaganda, but as material there to connect us to our reality and to almost give us an outlet. I'll give you that, yes. And so now I feel like they're trying to do the same thing. Obviously, the subject matter has changed. We're dealing with gay rights, Black Lives Matter, uh, minorities being um, well pushed out. Um, so I appreciate what they're doing here with the comic books. Yeah. They're, they're trying to switch it up, and I mean, it's hard. It's a new generation. It's a new, it's a 2016. Mm -hmm. You know, this it, it's different. Change all we you know. Change kind of sucks, but you know we're, we don't get to see the normal Thor, the normal Captain America. But I like the fact that they are making these changes to, I guess, coincide and to help us with, with today's reality. Yeah. Now, so. now some people criticize as well too. Yeah, you can make these changes in the comic books because comics really don't sell that well anymore but then in their mainstream movies you still have you know the dominant cast members of the avengers are all white right um, you still have the sporting characters like falcon um a war machine black panther they're you know african-american and so people are calling like yeah you can do whatever you want in the comics but until you put it up on the big screen where it really matters it doesn't really make any sense and i think that's valid because it, it's in, and it's only because there's lights on the screen, man. You know, I mean, I don't know if that makes sense, but there's, you know, everybody knows and loves movies for the most part, and that's where these. There's so many people that watch these movies, um, 
comic books aren't going anywhere, man. I yeah, think going, the, well, especially now because digital, they're, they're the source material, right? Is and, what it is. and for people to say that oh these don't matter, this is the stepping stone. I think this is the, these subtle changes are um, a glimpse, a little foreshadowing of what we may see from the comic yeah. book world in the future. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, is that they want to go... Because, like I said, with these characters, like, Thor, you know, the, the female Thor isn't actually the Thor. Um, you know, um, Falcon as Captain America isn't Steve Rogers. Right. This new Iron Man is not Tony Stark. So what it is is, say, you know, they're coming to the end of their contracts with Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans... Guess what? They just established a new Iron Man or a new Captain America in the comic books. Let's bring them in. Right. Now the window is open. Now the window is open for if those actors, instead of just recasting Steve Rogers or recasting um, Tony Stark, you bring in a new Iron Man who is an African American female. Who knows? To carry the torch. And you exactly. can easily just have a new character as opposed to just trying to make a new Tony Stark. Right. Uh, it makes me think of uh, new James Bond films and the big debate of whether or not the next James Bond should be African American. They been, or even female, actually. Uh, talking. Oh, wow. Yeah. Talking female as well. She's going to be a womanizer? Womanizer, womanizer. Hey, I'd watch that movie. I'd definitely watch giggity, that movie. Giggity, giggity. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, so who knows? Maybe James Bond will be the first to do that, uh, may change a major character like that on screen. But it's one of those things, too, where studios, for the most part, don't want to take the risk. And that's what it is, because they yeah. put so much money into these big budget films. They wanna they wanna get the best reassurance or the best bang for their buck. They wanna make sure they make their money back. And taking those risks like that, I don't think they're quite ready for. Right. And so to tie it back to Star Trek, maybe this is a small uh, but significant step in their eyes to start that trend. Maybe. I guess. Yeah. Um, and quite quite possibly. Whether it's good or bad, whether it's, it's necessary. I mean, who knows? But yeah, I think it's just it's with the Star Trek issue. It's just a matter of you know they try to do something nice to kind of pay tribute to George Sakai, and I guess maybe he he didn't see it as more of a tribute. I don't know. I mean, I really like what he said. I feel like he's he's. He's justified in what he said. I, yeah. I totally give him that. I think it's one of those things. Nobody is really wrong here. Right. It's just. I, you know, I, love, high, I love the debate. I love that. Exactly. The debate so. is good. We're not, so we're not trying to get too political here. We're just, you know, discussing the topic as well. So, but we'll move on from there. Um, we have not talked on this show at all about Game of Thrones since it ended, too. So sad. So let's not go into a big debate about it. Maybe we'll touch on a few things. But if we go, if you start talking about it, that's all we're going to talk about. So let's not go too in depth. But um, the executive producers of the show, David Beninoff and W. B. Weiss, talked to on the UFC Unfiltered podcast about the next season, season seven, and how the premiere date has not yet been set. Now they already said that the next season, season seven and season eight, which season eight is allegedly supposed to be the last season, is going to be shorter seasons, six to seven episodes, perhaps. Uh, when talking to them, they said, quote, We're starting a bit later because at the end of this season, winter is here, and that means that sunny weather doesn't really serve our purpose anymore. So we kind of pushed everything down the line so we can get some grim, gray weather, even in the sunnier places that we shoot. This, of course, leading to the fact that we might not get the season premiere of Game of Thrones in April like we're used to. Perhaps maybe it's pushed back, or if they do release it in April still, Maybe even it'll you know not last as long as it should too. Really, to me, this kind of gets me sad. That means Game of Thrones is coming to an. They got like 13, 14 episodes left, and Game right. of Thrones is going to be done, which is sad because it's become one of my favorite shows ever. But I do like the idea of how they ended the season of this Game of Thrones. Big battles are coming. Yeah. Okay. I think next season, like I said, I think next season is going to be the battle for Westeros between Cersei. And uh, Khaleesi. Yeah. And then the season after that, Jon Snow's got to rally everyone to fight the White Walkers. Right. Those two battles I have in mind are huge. Right. Okay? They're going to involve dragons. They're going to involve White Walkers. They're going to involve a lot of CGI and special effects. And some major stuff is going to be going down. So what I'm thinking is they have shorter episodes, but they still probably have the same season budget to where they can put more money into each episode to make it how it should be. 
See, I don't want shorter episodes, man. You give me less shorter episodes, seasons, you mean? Uh, yeah. Shorter seasons. I, these episodes better be two hours long, man. I want mini. <laughs> I want movies each episode. That's what I want. I well, want but seven you gotta, you gotta think, man. It, 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 you get the feeling it is coming to a head, man. You get the feeling all that's left is the battles at this point. Right, and and that being said, I look at this coming season. Um, with the finale, it set up the pieces. It's, it's like a chess game. You set up your pieces uh-huh. before you make your attack. Uh, and with this, now you're just quoting scene. Independence Day. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Goldblum here. <laughs> That's my Goldblum impression for you. Um, but with this this new season coming up, you're right. It's going to be a lot of major moves going on. Things I think every things are going to happen. Major major events are going to happen every episode. Uh, there will no longer be those episodes that just set up pieces. I think everything is set up the way it, sh- it is, and we're going to be seeing some shenanigans going down. Shenanigans, exactly. And that's what I'm saying. Because of the big battles that are coming up, I think having less episodes and having bigger budgets for each episode is going to serve us well. Uh, I've been having people... Now, You, as far as comparing it to Walking Dead, you can arguably say those are the biggest dramas right now on TV. And this past season, people I heard were severely disappointed with The Walking Dead. But those people, same people who have said Game of Thrones has not been that where they drag stuff out. They they don't disappoint compared to The Walking Dead. What do you say? I say Walking Dead producers and writers are um, afraid to end the series, I feel like. Well, that's I feel what like they're, they're doing whatever they got to do to drag it on and keep it going. For if they, if they, I think that they had their they way. Said, they said there's no, their... they have no plan of ending in sight. That's and a that's, scary thought. That that means lack of vision for uh, the show. Yeah. Which, well, again, you get that. You after a while, you start to, to fumble a little bit with Game of Thrones. They said, hey, they we learned at the beginning of this season. They're like, hey, we got two more seasons left, and then we're probably going to end it. And I, and I love that they're real. They, I, the real fans of the show themselves. They I know. Like. They know the story they want to tell. Uh-huh. They have a beginning. They have an end, and the end is the end. Exactly. And Walking Dead seems like it's not going to end. I don't see an end in sight, even with until the, the ratings get so low. They have they, to end it. And that's what I'm afraid of. I was like, I'd rather this show end before it leaves on a low note like that. I mean, I hate you, that. Yeah. You have Negan now appearing in. Who's going to be in the next season? You got to come to an end. He is your ultimate uh, catalyst villain. Villain, yeah. And um, now you have that set up. You know him and Rick with the show off, the showdown. Uh, yeah. I think it's time to um, put it to an end, and I don't think yeah. that they are. I agree. Yeah, they're, they're going to try to drag it out, and that's you know that's a problem with a lot of shows, really. Like Supernatural, I used to love, love watching Supernatural, but they've dragged that so much out. It's just after season eight. I just got sick of it. I think they're going to start season 13 or something now. And it's just ridiculous. I think when it comes to a show, just like a movie, you got to have a beginning, you have a middle, you have an end, you have to have an outline, and you got to see it through because if you keep dragging it out, all you're doing is just doing a disservice to your audience and your characters. And that's my end. So I like, again, going back to Game of Thrones, these guys are following their plan. No matter how disappointed we may be that it's going to end, I like that they have that vision and they have it all mapped out to where it's when you sit down and watch Game of Thrones from the season one to say season eight, it's going to be one long story and it's going to be satisfying the whole way through. I think I'm going to buy it all seasons. When it comes, every, when it comes out in like one the, through, yeah, definitely. yeah. When it comes out, pack, well, when season okay, so we have season seven, then we have season eight. Before season eight comes out, I plan on going back and rewatching all seven seasons. Because usually I'll go back and I'll rewatch. Of course you do. I'll, I'll usually I'll go back and I'll rewatch the previous season. Like right. before season six came out, I bought season five, rewatched it, and I was ready for season six. I'll do the same thing with six when seven comes out. But the last season, season eight, I'm gonna go back and rewatch the whole series, man. Yeah. That's just how it is. Just how it is. So, all right, moving on to the next topic, uh, Brian Cranston. Mr. Breaking Bad himself, the Emmy winner, uh, has talked about the Power Rangers movie, which he's going to be featured in coming. He's going to be featured in, excuse me, as Zordon. Now, for those of you who don't know, Mr. Cranston actually did a little bit of work on the original Power Rangers television series as some voice work. I said he did like a couple of the monsters and some of the putties and stuff too, which people didn't know about. I didn't know, I, I, I didn't know about it until uh, they talked about it on Collider Movie Talk. I so. Didn't know that. But now he's coming back for the movie to play Zordon. So he talked to the Huffington Post and said, quote, I really wasn't high on it until I talked to the producer and read the script and talked to the director. After that, I went, I went this is different. This is as different a reimagining as the Batman Adam West television series as the Batman movie series. 
you can't compare those two, nor can you compare this movie version of the Power Rangers to that of the television series. It's unrecognizable for the most part. There are tenets of the folklore that you hold onto for sure, but the inspiration is different, and the sensibility of it and the approach of the filmmaking is completely different. I don't know if the tone is as dark as, as something as The Dark Knight because you're dealing with teenagers. So the appropriateness of that in real teenage life and going through high school and the cliches, popularity, the bullies, all the different sections and subsections of high school life, the insecurities these kids have, and their hopes and dreams, and you embrace all that into a retelling of Power Rangers, and what you would get is this new version, this new reimagined version. Power Rangers set to come out March 24, 2017, also starring Elizabeth Banks as Rita Repulsa. So these little tidbits about Brian Cranston talking about how it's going to be very different from the television series. How do you feel about it, man? First off, I love that he referred to Power Rangers as folklore. Folklore, yes. I love that. It's got a good mythology to it. Yeah, and that's what makes me even more excited about the film as well, man. Um, I love the casting so far, by the way. Yeah, Cranston kind of, I think, shocked people because in, I think in any movie or TV series, once you get a legitimate actor or actresses, on top of something, people start to take it seriously. And he's very intense. Uh -huh. uh, I think in his, in his acting method, he's always very intense characters. Um, so I'm excited what he's going to bring to Zordon. Um, as far as the uh, what we're talking about, as far as the uh, material, and I think it's going to be much darker. Um, I'm excited to see how they're going to bring these teenagers together. Um, we talked about diversity and, and, and that before. I think this could be an opportunity for them to... Um, have a new origin for these kids and how they come together. Maybe have them separate and, you know, totally different not, people. Not be friends to not start be friends. with. I always looked at the original Power Rangers as the coolest kids, the popular kids in high school at the time. And I always had a little bit of disconnection with them, like, just because I felt like I couldn't, I was never part of that group. I had the same, same feeling as I watched Saved by the Bell. You know? <laughs> Those are the cool kids that I had <laughs> Those are the cool kids, be friends right? with. Um, so I hope that they, because of this is going to be a darker uh, story, a darker, darker material, darker perspective. I think, I'm not it. saying dark. I think it's going to be more serious, you know, because when you go back and look at the original series, it was very comical to laugh at because of it, it, did, it was really, it tried to take itself too seriously, I guess, and it came off as more funny, at least to me. It was like Scooby Doo. It's like you knew the bad guy was going to lose. Yeah. You knew the bad guy yeah. was going to lose. And if they can change that up a little bit, maybe a little bit more uh, suspense. I mean, I would, I would completely find the original Power Rangers movie that came out with was really cool. I really enjoyed it because, it again, it was a step up for the Power Rangers as far as, um, you know, taking itself a little more seriously, the material a little more seriously. Uh, the Turbo Power Rangers movie I never even saw because no. I think it was just stupid. After they got out of the Mighty Morphin, that's when I left Power Rangers. But, uh, I'm, again, these, these comments coming from him. But then, again, what is he going to say? You know, with Cranston, he's like, oh, no, this movie's going to suck. Well, the fact that it's the fact that he's signed on to do the movie adds so much. And he's, and he's interested in the script. It just, you know, it backs it up. I mean, you, love, you want an actor who's, who's into the material he's reading. I mean, one thing that brings to mind is when Hugo Weaving uh, kind of yeah. shot down so Captain he, America. And he didn't want to do any more Red Skull. Skull, yeah. And I was like, that kind of, you know, put a bad taste in my mouth towards that. And, and the fact that he is 100% behind this, it's awesome, man. <laughs> and the fact that he's done with Power Rangers before and now yeah. he's coming back yeah. to do... Uh, coming full circle. Man. Yeah, man. It's, it's very cool. Um, cool. Well, we'll just have to wait and see March how this pulls out. I'm, I'm curious to see once, like, pictures and clips start coming out how it's all going to come together. I'm not holding my breath for hope, but at the same time, I'm definitely interested being a fan of the television series. The Myth. They have a new comic book actually now out now, too, which I read the first issue, and it takes place right after... Tommy becomes the Green Ranger and like joins the team and stuff like that. First issue wasn't too bad. I'll uh, you know continue on and see how it goes from there. But again, again, these are teenagers in a modern world who step up to essentially be superheroes and take on you know an alien and fight monsters and it's you know pretty intense stuff for a teenager. I mean, I couldn't even balance extracurriculars. And my schoolwork and a job. How am I supposed to add in fighting intergalactic aliens with that? I mean, it's it's you got to make it relatable. One of those things are going to suffer, man. School's gonna school's gonna have to suffer if I'm saving the world. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that makes sense. Okay. So next up, guys, we're gonna talk a little X Men. 
Uh, Simon Kidberg, executive producer, came out and talked to the Hashtag Show about the status of the Gambit film starring Channing Tatum. Now, originally this film was supposed to come out back in October of this year, uh, but the filming hasn't even started. Uh, when they talked to Ken Berg, he said, quote, We have a great script on that and hope to shoot the movie at the beginning of spring of next year. There was a moment where we were going to shoot the movie at the beginning of this year, and then we felt like it just wasn't ready. So knowing slash hoping that Gambit is like Deadpool, the start of a new franchise within the X-Men universe, we want to make sure we get it right. Now, Doug Lyman is still set to direct the film. However, he has gone on to sign another movie to work on before he comes back to Gambit as well. Kimber went on to talk about how the next one up on their slate for Fox is going to be the Deadpool sequel. Then they're looking about uh, another X-Men film and Gambit, of course, somewhere in between. Now, this movie's kind of been pushed back and talked about and rumored. And at one point, Shannon Tate was on. At one point, Shannon Tate was off. It's all kind of speculated at this point. With all the things surrounding it, of all the promises, do you think we're still going to get Gambit? Or, I mean, what do you think, man? I really, I'm going to be honest here, whether I have haters or not. I think I really hope this movie doesn't go through. Really? I, I, I don't want to see Channing Tatum. I'm, I'm reading over these notes and I'm thinking, trying to picture Channing Tatum and this Cajun and, accent, yeah. the raging Cajun. But I can't. I, yeah. You know, Jupiter Ascending keeps coming to mind. But, <laughs> and, 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 you gotta look at, okay, I used to be the biggest Channing Tatum hater. I, I thought he was a piece of junk actor, totally horrible, but he's worked on his craft. He stepped up. You got the 21 Jump Street movies. You got Fox Catcher. He's getting better as an actor to where I think he might be able to pull the, the role off and give it the commitment and intensity it needs. But it's the Cajun accent for me. That's what it comes down to. And, and, I, and I'm, not, I'm, I'm not a complete Channing Tatum hand him. I think he's a, got a great comedic time. I think he does great in some, in some aspects, some, some roles. And I think that he's going to look awesome. I think he's going to look badass yeah. as, as Gambit. But the minute we hear him talk, the minute we hear, I, I can't see him nailing the accent. I can't see him nailing um, the charisma at I the think, same time. I think, um, I think Fox has a lot of other things going for them in regards to the X Men franchise. After Apocalypse, people want to see another X Men movie with that younger Cyclops, Jean Grey, Nightcrawler, Storm. That's the next movie they want to see there. They want to see the Deadpool sequel. They want to see Cable. Bring in X Force. They have a lot on their plate. I feel like Gambit. A lot of people at this point don't even care about seeing a Gambit movie, much like yourself. Yeah. Gambit used to be one of my favorite characters as a kid, but as much as I would love to see him in, a, in a, his own movie, at this point I really don't care. Right. So we'll just have to wait and see how the rest of it goes. Um, do you want to talk about the CW stuff, or do you want to just call it a day? Yeah, call it a day, man. Okay. Cool. All right, guys. Well, that is going to be it for us today. I would like to thank Josh for returning here as well. Uh, it's been a long time. Been missed, my man. Been missed. Thank you, man. Yeah. We, we need to start doing this more often. Of course, love having Lisa on the show. You know, she, she's always good for that uh, female perspective as well. Uh, but you and me started this. I love having fun, sitting down, talking with you. Um, hopefully next week we can do it again. Of course, like I said, we are Comic-Con and Star Wars Celebration, so there's going to be a lot to talk about these next couple weeks. Uh, by next week, we will have uh, a Star Wars Rogue One trailer. Yeah. Ghostbusters will have come out. Like, where are you planning on seeing Ghostbusters this weekend? Um, possibly. He's starting to go see it on Sunday. So we're going to talk about that. And uh, like I said, more Star Wars news coming up as well. And then also, um, I'm not sure what time we'll do it next week, but hopefully I'll have seen the Batman v Superman Ultimate Cut. Yep. And maybe give more of a review on that as well. So a lot of things coming up in the next week, man. Better, uh, better clear schedule because we're going to be talking a lot here. Batman Superman's priority too, man. Okay. So I think I'll, by Tuesday I'll be able to have it done. Awesome, awesome. Well, guys, that is it for us. If you want to get hold of us, talk to us about what we've talked about here or anything else in the world of geekdom, hit us up, dayspringdiscussions at gmail.com. You can also find us on Facebook, on the Facebook group. I do a lot of stuff on there. I'm less good about the Twitter account. I try to post pictures uh, on there as well. But you can hit me up personally on... Twitter and Instagram, Slim, S L Y M, Dayspring12. Josh, where can they find you? Uh, Instagram, please. I need followers. You can follow me at I am Batman247. I'm, I'm trying to get to a million followers. I'm almost there, 300. So, uh, yeah, 
Follow me. Okay. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, go out. Go catch some Pokemon. Uh, gotta catch them all. I guess that's what the phrase <laughs> what? is. Go, you go. actually knew it. <laughs> I know, right? All right. But I'm going to end you on some Star Trek on that. Until uh, next time, guys. Live long and prosper. <laughs>